so hey guys welcome to my new video so this was the match that made me really excited to record and upload for you guys because of the unique draft put on by bleed esports against homeboy singapore in game number three of mplsg so let's see who wins this match and how bleed esports tries to win with this unique draft now let's carry on with the video can be going to gear now we got two double fighters jay right here you only don't need a mage a magic support damage already so you have J on the chip. I told you. Oh yeah. So you don't have a mid, you don't have a standard mid laner. It's a mid lane J on the chip. And we have the Arlot Markets combo. Yeah. You know, that knocks that you solves, around. Yeah, correct. That solves your physical damage. You have lots of magic damage in the side of CG, and that frees up J, the artist, to basically design and create havoc against Homeboy Singapore. And homeboys SG, how will they respond? I mean, it's already set in stone what Bleed wants to play. But homeboys SG, they still have the Frederick to work around. And they are yet to pick up the Roamer of choice. I mean, possibly. Possibly the, the Minotaur has been taken out. Florin has been taken out. So, Raphael. Raphael, Grok. I mean, Estes? Grok. That's yes. going to be a Grok coming out from the side of Homeboy Singapore. They need to find a way to disengage or perhaps engage. So that's something that Homeboy Singapore draft. Whereas for Bleed, they need to rely on this fast-paced massive movement coming out from gear on this chip to basically react against Homeboy Singapore. So Bleed's draft is just purely reacting what Homeboy Singapore wants to do. And Yoon has to find the early game advantage as much as possible versus uh, Jocks here as the Martins. But Gear doing an extremely good job of playing keep away for him as he will be ushered out of their jungle. But still, I mean, Homeboys SG, they do have the old reliable Vernacure on the Paquito as well. We do know that that has been a winning formula for them. But now, with Chip in the question, that's a lot of things thrown out. A lot of theories thrown out as well. Jay on the mid lane with Drizzle. Yeah, he needs to be careful here. Gear and uh, Yoon were going at it in the, in the jungle for quite some time. It was looking to be a better love story than Twilight, but nonetheless, <laughs> Gear and Yoon, they're going to disengage at this point. I'm uh, definitely on Team Gear right now, right? Like, uh, we get to see Chip. I'm glad. And the Terizla just dealing so much damage to Buji on the mid lane. You expect, you know... I'm a Novaria, I have range, right? You, you're not supposed to be near Teresla, but look at Bougie's HP right now. Mm -hmm. Jay is doing an extremely good job of utilizing the fighter mid. Yeah, and like I said, this guy is a designer, right? And this guy is an artist, right? Even though Bougie should have the range advantage, Jay somehow managed to outheal the damage that Bougie because of the Brave Smite and also do damage against Bougie. So it's crazy how flexible Jay is as a mid laner in the side of bleed. And now the turtle fight, the first turtle of the game, will be going underway. Vernacure has to use the flicker away to get out of trouble. That will be a battle spell burnt for the next two minutes. So right now, the pokes come in. Jock's hanging around. Shen is actually having getting zone out gear, and okay, Vernacure goes one to one. Yeah, gear falling extremely low. Gear going a little low in the bottom lane. Looks like uh, <laughs> Vernal Kirk went too deep himself. He's going to be killed. Oh, nice three-man stun. The penalty zone was on point. The Shura Aura doing some damage. They have the Echo, though. But Zishuan, I don't think he gets away from this one. He's going to be killed, and Jox will take the double kill. And it looks like they want more. They've gotten the triple kill. Jox is continuing to flex here. Jay's going to stick around, and this Tarisla is paying off. Yeah, definitely. That massive penalty zone right there just really making the, the work opens up the map so much for Jocks to basically take away a cam, a purple from the side of Shen, and also have access to the turtle already. Who is this guy and where did he come from? Deep Jay Terizla? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, Jay Terizla mid? Ah, oh, man, where was this guy yesterday? Now we'll oh, nice charge two man knock up. Gear's gonna be killed, Zichuan and Jay. Both will take credit for that one. They've got a two for nothing. Yeah, yeah, that shortcut not paying off in dividends right there. Seiji will have to farm up as much as possible. Anit just having slight advantage in terms of lane priority at this point. Now I'm curious about the emblems coming on Seiji, right? Like, if you notice, Anip, usually you go for a common emblem, but Seiji is a lot more mana hungry as compared to Anip, and ooh, so much AO, uh, uh, double AA damage. And Saginu, he does have the damage to burst down Vernacure. We know that Saginu, he likes to go for this damage build on the Arla, not the traditional tanky Arla that we've been seeing. Now, the turtle being uncontested. Homeboy's SG will get it scot free. They want, the bleed wants the top lane priority. They want to prioritize Seiji as much as possible.
Both teams decided that, okay, fine. Turtle's not going to be very important at all, since we're going to go into scale and game oh, damage. Nice wild charge connecting on it to the Blazing Duet. Gear goes in for this one, trying to slow him down, but Anif will take credit for this one. Jay getting a little low himself. Jishuan still up in front. Somehow gets a Shura aura. He's going to be killed. Jax will take credit for that. Jax continuing on. No, it looks like there's going to be a disengage now. Yeah, so what happened right there is just uh, gear always extending. That's okay, but I feel like right now just Homo Singapore just decided to just pounce on him, uh, trying to make some space on him to basically get his farm right, especially when he's already down. Don't forget, right now, if you notice, the uh, turret energy is still up. Oh, Seiji. Oh, for no cure. Under tower. What are you doing, my friend? One versus two, and you got killed. Seiji will take credit for that. Yeah, he tries to cut the wave right now. If you notice, Seiji's rotation all the way down bot, it's going to absorb so much of that gold. Oh, you have been taking a lot. The final slash pushing him back. The flicker will keep him alive, but that might have been a uh, cooldown wasted. Yeah. Homo Singapore, this kind of roster is Bougie's ultimate is going to be very big, especially when you have uh, bonus hit boxes with the Grog Wild Charge. That's so much easier for Yun to land the stun and also the knockup. So that's something Bleed has to be a little bit careful about, especially as they exit the portal because you are stacked together when you exit that portal. Yeah, and it's falling to the mid stages of the game where the mobility of the chip will come into question here. We saw Seiji utilize it to rotate towards the bottom lane and Chip being able to be there with the Y walk. I mean, Vernicure was expecting Seiji just to be alone because he saw gear at the top lane, right? Then he just managed to use that Y walk into another place. And that's that's just genius coming out from Chip at this point. Gear showing a lot of facets as a roamer. Yeah, and right now it's just... Just being you, the chip being used to match the rotations of Vienna Cure. So that's a okay, but Gear needs to pay attention because if you rotate Seiji all the way, I, I, if Vienna Cure gets a lot of damage out onto Seiji, then there's going to be a lot of trouble for the side of Bleed. And now with the turtle up, uh, Homeboy Singapore and Bleed, they look for a clash right around here. And Gear, he might be on the cusp of a gank. He is in danger though. He's focused in, but he's about half life though. Looking to turn this around. Yoon getting a little low. He wild charged back in. Oh, nice three pedal, three man penalty zone. He connects onto three with that one. Zijuan continue to fight there. He might dash away. He's continuing to be focused. The short or oh, not letting no. him go, and Jax will slice him down. Sagitnu continuing to fight though. He dashes over the wall. He's gonna be fine. Uh... Seiji makes an appearance. The turtle back into its cave. Anip. Do they uh, want to fight for this? Jay getting a little uh, bit low. He's getting whittled uh, here. Anip focusing uh, it on him. Jay still up in front. The uh, turtle a little gear. bit low. Gear goes in. Nice two-man stun on that one. But where's the damage? Anip blazing oh, duet man. on point. But as he no. gets bursted, Saginu, though, will take credit for that. And now five members up from bleed. Looks like they've done this. I understand why Hollow, you're so confused. Because sometimes you may thought that, oh, okay, Bleed wants to fight for this turtle priority, but they also go on to go to the kill. So all of a sudden, Bleed is just split up, right? I don't know what I want to do, but I just want to do both at the same time. So they invested equal resources on both sides. Homeboy Singapore, unfortunately, when Anik goes down, it just, the turtle priority goes over to the homeboys, and uh, sorry, to Bleed. And don't forget, Seiji is just hard pushing side lanes, and he's just getting so much gold right now. He's soaking out so much gold. And this is the perfect playstyle for Bleed right now, right? Given that the fact that they have a Charizard on the mid lane, Chip is a form of soaking damage by Blazing Duet. Duet! Seiji over the wall, trying to dodge it. Anip images back in, he's safe, but Yoon, not Ooh. so kind. Fuji on the run, Jox, Jay tried to go for the penalty zone, he's gonna miss that one. The Shura Aura does connect, does damage, but no real follow-up. And the bottom lane, just a little bit of skirmish going on, oh, so he nice knew just getting a bit of damage. But oh, here he wants to go in for this one. He's been knocked up, though, and Jay has made oh. an appearance as well, but that oh. might have been a little too deep at this point. The energy eruption locking in Jay, the appraiser's wrath as Game well. They do have the damage. Fuji will take the double kill. Saginu will kill Anip, though, so that's a bit of a win. Seiji will take out the tower. I, I see what Bleed wanted to do, but the timing is not that, right? Bleed wants to cut the waves and push Homeboy Singapore back into the second tier turret so that Seiji could sneak up and take the turret. However, Bleed was a little bit too early and a little bit too greedy, right? there but I mean trading for two kills from mid turret I think that's I think that's worth it because sometimes we see teams struggling to get the mid uh, lane first tier turret yeah and that opens up so much control given the fact that they have a lineup they have a damage a lot right he went for the blade of haptic he already has the uh, malefic roar as well and in terms see, of however, damage yeah, yeah you see that uh, Martis already has the hunter strike available so it would mean so much control in terms of the enemy jungle bleed now have so much map control 
Yeah, but Fuji can always wrestle it back. You just see that one ultimate just denies everything that Blee wants to do and can do in this particular roster. It's like, you know, there's a lot of damage, hello? Yeah, and that's what Fuji needs to be worried about. He has to play keep away from Saginu as much as possible. Saginu will be looking for him. Fuji opening up the map. Non-committal right here. Yoon also doing the same. A lot of information given over the side of Homeboy Singapore. Now Vyrnir Kill goes in for the Malefic Roar. Has a better push up top. And now Bleed is staggering, uh, starting to collect, uh, collectively collate around the Lord Pit right here. Yoon using that wall to try to reset, try to force it out to drive by some time. Vyrnir Kill has a massive push up top. And now Homeboy Singapore looking for Bleed. Oh, Concealed Gear goes right in for this one. He goes straight to Fuji. He's trying to focus this one. But they're looking to turn this around. Zijuan has a nice appraisal Wrath connecting on a three, but Jax has already taken the Lord. Zijuan, Anip, gonna use the Blazing Duet. Does a, so much damage. And it looks like uh, somehow they're still nope. surviving, but the portal pushes them back. They've got it out. And now Yun is on the run. Sajinu trying to get away. They do have the nice stun up. The Entropy pushes the oh. board. They do get Yun as well. Man, three men down for the side of Homeboy Singapore. Bleed takes away the Lord. And that, and then Vinokur just create a lot of space. Yes, that's a massive trade, but Homeboy Singapore is now losing a lot of map prior. I'll take a look. With the Super Minions marching out, mid lane already taken down. Bottom side, there's also another lock push that Homeboy Singapore needs to deal with. Oh, it looks like they're gonna go for Inferno Cure has already been pushed back. Jox and uh, everybody else is taking the T3, so they'll take that one. Bleed looking to just regroup. The Lord is pushing in the bottom lane. Yeah, Bleed getting so many objectives for themselves despite huh? giving up Inferno Cure. Wait, they take away mid already just like that? Yeah, they took away the inhibitor turret as well. I mean, with only Vernicure and Anip available, that's extremely hard to defend, given the final slash from Saginu is doing so much damage. Saginu continuing to fight. Zijuan pushes him back. They get the final slash on the Yoon. Zijuan, though, is going to be oh, killed. Man. The Lord is going to be up. The Blazing Duet is doing some work, but Anip image is back. He's going to be fine for now. Vernicure is pushing the mid lane as well. Or he's kind of trying to defend, excuse me, and they're looking to focus his on the T3, they take the bottom one. The Echo is there, and it looks like that's going to be a disengage. Man, Bleed is not supposed to be able to take down the mid lane turret before the Lord Clash, right? Homeboy Singapore, the defenses kind of fail because their offense is the best defense. Using Vyrnir Kill to make sure that they gain a lot of map and side lane priority, that's how they want to play. But when it comes to like defending a base turret, they don't really have much wave clear apart from Bougie and to a certain extent Anip, where you really want to save up your Blazing Duet to also uh, wave clear. But don't forget the nerf on, by the, onto the Claude, uh, with Blazing Duet doing lesser damage onto the minions actually hurts that high ground. So Homeboy Singapore, they have to play offensive in order to play defensive. And Jox, he is a tanky beast at this point. He can run in unabided, and we do see a penalty zone. Yeah, penalty zone, but just on to Yoon, it might not have been enough right there. Jox got the Ashura Aura, but really no cleanup on this. Yeah, there's no way that Yoon was able to survive that, and not just that, right? Uh, he's unable to use the wall charge. Imagine if he has a point blank wall charge right there. Homeboy Singapore would have pounced, but Vern Kerr is playing off map right now. Homeboy Singapore needs to buy as much time as possible. They may climb back if Bleed makes a mistake. Yeah, and the only mistake that they can make is leaving Seiji unguarded versus Vernicure at this point. But the thing is, Bleed, they have so many frontliners. Gear is getting extremely tanky as well. Jay has been tanky. He is a Tarazla after all. And the thing is, Martis is also building towards a tank build as well. Hunter Strike being on yep. the only damage item yep. of choice. So Saginu and Seiji will be the main damage dealers of this team. And it's extremely yep. scary to deal with. I like how Jay is just like, you know, I've got enough damage on my team already. I've got Saginu that's always building <laughs> damage items on the Arla, even though, yeah, usually you build uh, tank items on the Arla. So Jay is just basically just, okay, I'm becoming a suit, uh, the secondary tank. That's how... The artist likes to design this. This is just Jay being just flexing how flexible he is. Knock up energy rock on Saginu. They're looking to turn this around though. The reinforcements have arrived. Saginu is going to be killed though. Zishuan will be killed as well. But Yon is killed and is, you know, Seiji's on point with this one. Seiji continuing on. They don't even need to deal with the Lord. They're just going to focus it in. They've all got the portal. The base is wide nope. open at this point. No, nope. currently Bob is the only minion right now. Bob is going to get down. But don't forget, there's no minions now. Bleed shouldn't try to force this and they're taking a lot of damage. They do have minions coming to back them up. And and Blade will eventually take this series. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you up in the next one. Let's go.